Hey guys, all right, so we are going to write functions that describe the relationship between two quantities. We're gonna explore the composition of two functions through a real world scenario. Okay, so it says, recall that Jim has a lawn service called Greens Grass Guaranteed. On every mowing job, Jim charges a fixed $30 fee. That seems rather important. Fixed $30 fee to cover equipment and travel expenses, plus a literal plus, a $20 per hour labor charge. Work with your group on items one through 14. Obviously we're not doing that, okay? So number one, it says on a recent mowing job, Jim worked for six hours. What was the total charge for this job? Well, he charges a $30 fixed fee. Fixed means that's just what it is on top of everything else. And then on top of that, it's plus $20 per hour. So $20 times the number of hours. Well, if the number of hours is six, then it's 20 times six. Well, that would be 30 plus 20 times six is 120. So this job is costing him, or he's charging his customers $150 for this job. So it's not costing him, it's costing the customers, but it's making him some money. Number two, if Jim works for T hours, what will he charge for a mowing job? Write your answer as a cost function where C of T is Jim's charge for T hours of work. So now we're going to convert this into just a function. So function notation, C of T is what they want us to name it. And it's exactly that. Um, but we like to put it in standard form. So since we're using T hours instead of a set number of hours, we'll put 20 T and then plus 30. And there it is. It takes Jim four hours to mow one acre. Okay. Jim prepares a cost estimate for each customer based on the size, the number of acres of the property. I guess it would make sense if you're mowing a lawn, it would depend on how many acres that lawn is. Now out here, that wouldn't be an issue because um, when we're on, when we say acres, we mean acres of dirt, dirt and rock. Anyways, so it wouldn't be up here in the desert. Number three, the Apcon company is one of Jim's customers. Apcon has two acres that need mowing. How many hours does that job take? Well, if we have two acres and it takes Jim four hours to mow one acre, then it would take how many hours to mow two? eight hours. Okay. Another customer has a acres of property. So it's a variable, meaning we don't know how many acres it is. It's a acres. Write the equation of the function in terms of a for the number of hours T it will take Jim to mow the property. Well, they want us to call it um, T of a, right? hours T in terms of A, the number of acres. So we know it takes them four hours to mow one acre, so it'd be four times the number of acres, so four times A. Isn't that how we got this? Four times two is eight. So four times A would give us the um, number of hours it would take to mow a certain number of acres. Okay, number five. How much will Jim charge Apcon to mow its property? Justify your answer. Okay, so we know that it's gonna take eight hours for Jim to mow the property at Apcon. So the cost would be, you know, the time it takes is, is eight. So C of eight equals 20 times eight plus 30. Well, 20 times eight is 160. 
add 30 to that, and it's gonna cost APCON 190 bucks for Jim to mow their property. Okay. The functions in items two and four relate three quantities that vary based on the needs of Jim's customers. There's three things going on here. We've got the size in acres, the time and hours that it takes to get the job done, and the cost in dollars of doing the work. So there's three things that are considered in this problem. So it says complete the table below by writing the rate of change with units and finding the slope of the graph of the function. So if we look under math tips, it says the linear function f of x equals mx plus b, uh, the y-intercept is b, the variable m is the rate of change, m is the slope, slope is the same as the rate of change, the change of units of f of x per change of unit of x. When the function is graphed, the rate of change is interpreted as the slope. So y equals mx plus b is called slope-intercept form of a linear equation. All right, so these are linear. Pretend that that t was an x, it would be 20x plus 30. So it, it looks like y equals mx plus b. Same thing here, pretend that a is an x, it would be y equals 4x. And since there's no b, that means that it would be 0, like 4x plus 0. They just don't put the plus 0 because you don't have to. All right, so we have two functions here. c of t is 20t plus 30, and t of a is 4a. Rate of change, so that would be the slope. So think of slope-intercept form y equals mx plus b and the slope is our m so if that's the case what would be the rate of change the slope of the c of t function well it has to do with the 20 the number in front of the t so that means it would be 20, this has to do with cost, so $20 and T has to do with the time. So $20 per hour. And the slope, rate of change is the same as the slope, they're equal. So this is 20. All right, for T of A, this, the rate of change would be the four and this has to do with um, four hours, because this is the time in terms of the acres, so it's four hours per acre, and the slope is four. Up four over one, up four over one. Turn the page. All right, so let's complete the table below by naming the measurement units for the domain and range of each function. So just remember that domain is the x values. These are the numbers that we input into a function. And the range, the y values, are what we get out of the function, the output. Input is x, output is y. You input an x value, you output a y value. All right, so we have the function C of T. C of T stands for the cost for the job. The domain, the X values, in this case, they're the T values. T stands for time, and the time is in hours. Okay. The range, this is the Y values, is what this is overall, and it's the cost. So that is in dollars. Now, instead of an S, I'm gonna do a dollar sign just because it's fun. All right, T of A, the time to mow. The domain has to do with the number of acres. So we're inputting how many acres, and we output how much time it's gonna take to mow that lawn. And it's in hours. Okay, so number eight, it says calculating the cost to mow a lawn is a two-step process. Complete the graphic organizer below by describing the input and output, including units for each part of the process. Okay, so we're starting with the time to mow function. So that's the T of A function. 
There's our little function machine. So we input acres. And we output hours. You tell them how many acres you have. We tell you how long it's going to take. Then we take those hours and we input them into the cost for job function machine and we output how much money it's gonna cost to do that job. The dollars. Okay, so the graphic organizer shows an operation on two functions. When you are operating on two functions, that is called a composition. Okay. The function that results from using the output of the first function as the input of the second function is a composite function. Composition is an operation of two functions that forms a new function. To form the new function, the rule for the first function is used as the input for the second function. So basically, we're plugging in a function into another function. And then we output the answer. Okay. So we do this algebraically and we also do it graphically. So let's look at the graph. Example A. It says, use the graphs to find f of g of t for x equals a negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 2. Okay, so whenever you see this notation, it's function notation, and you always work from the inside out. So you always start with the inside. So let's start with an x value of negative 2. So we're going to plug in a negative 2 for g of t. So g of negative 2. Okay. This is the f of x function. Let's highlight those so that we know which one's which. This is the f of x function. I'll use a different color highlighter. And this is the g of x function, or g of t function, I should say. Okay. So if we're plugging in a negative 2 into the g function, what is negative 2? Negative 2, the output is a 4. Okay. So now, what is f? of 4. Well, now we have to go to the f function. f of 4, so this point right here, the output would be a 2. So, let's organize this information. We'll make a little table. So we have x and f of g of t. And we're plugging in negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 2. So again, remember we start by plugging in the negative 2 for g of t. So plug into the g of t function. So an x value of negative 2 gives me a y value of 4. And then I have to plug that into the f function. So an x value of 4 gives me a y value of 2. Okay. Now let's start with the negative 1. So I'll use a different color. So this time, g of negative 1, so I have to go to the g function, find where x is negative 1, that's right here at this point, and the output is a positive 1. And then I have to take that to the f function, because that's what it says to do next. You work from the inside out. So now I go to a positive 1 here, and I, I'm at this point on the line there, and the output is a 1 half. Oops, you guys can't see. All right, next, an x value of 0. Start with 0, and we have to plug it into the g of t function. So g of 0, so plugging in 0 into the g. Oh, I forgot to switch colors. In the g function, 0 is at the origin, and it's 0, 0, so the output is 0. And then you take that output and you plug it into the f function. So at 0 on the f, it's also at 0. So 0, 0 and then try an x value of 2. So start with g of t. g of 2 would be an output of 4. And then take that 4. It's your new input to the f function. And at 4, the output is a 2. And turn the page. 
And look at that. Sorry, someone called me, so you might have heard me say that twice. But anyways, that table is the same exact table that we just wrote down. And so we found the f of g of x values there by plugging one into the other. So you could do it on the graph, but you can also do it by hand. So it says to use the graphs in example A to evaluate each expression. So luckily I have both graphs here because I have my notes next to me. So I need to find f of g of 1. So I start by finding what g of 1 is. So I'm at the g function and I go to g of 1 and the output is also a 1. So g of 1 is 1. So now I'm going to change that to f of 1. Okay, what is f of 1? Well, f of positive 1, that's this point right here, is that 1 half. So this equals 1 half. Okay. And then g of f of 4, well, this time I have to start with the f function. I need to find f of 4. Okay. So I'm at the f function, looking for an x value of 4, I'm right here, and that y value is a 2. Okay, so now this is g of 2. What is g of 2? Go to the g function and find 2. When x is 2, the y is 4, so the output is a 4. These are actually really easy when you get the hang of it. It just looks funky. All right, f of negative 4 now. g of f of negative 4, so we start with the inside there. So we're starting with the f function, and we're looking for an x of negative 4, and that output is a negative 2. So that becomes g of negative 2. Every time I put my hand there, it gets blurry because it's trying to focus. All right, going back to the g function, g of negative 2. We're at this point right here. The output is a 4. So this also equals 4. And then the last one, this time it's g of g of negative 1. So first we need to find g of negative 1. So negative 1, the output is a positive 1. So this becomes g of 1. And now let's find what g of 1 is. g of 1 is 1. So one half, four, four, one. All right. So it says in the context, in this context, the composite function is formed by the time to mow function and the cost for the job function. Its domain is the input for the time function and its range is the output from the cost function. The cost to mow is a composite function. Describe its input and output as you did in item eight. Okay, for the time to mow, we have to figure out, well, how many acres are we mowing? So we have to input the number of acres. When we input the number of acres, we wanna get out the cost for the job. Well, that has to do with how many hours it's gonna take, so we need to input also how many hours it's gonna to take to mow that many acres. And once we know that, then we know how much it's going to cost in dollars. Dollars. Okay. So when a composite function is formed, the function is often named to show the functions used to create it. The cost to mow function, C of T of A, is composed of the cost for the job and the time to mow functions. The C of T of A notation implies that A was assigned a value T of A by the time to mow function. Then the resulting T of A value was assigned a value C of T of A by the cost to mow function. So I know that's a lot of wording, okay? And it's okay if you don't understand that. What you do need to understand is you're just plugging in a function into another function and they're related, okay? It's easy to see how these are related to each other because we need to know how many acres the property is so that we know how many hours it's gonna take to do it so that we know how much to charge. They're all related, okay? So it says complete the table by writing a description for the composite function C of T of A, then name the measurement units of the domain and the range. So 
C, they use the letter C because it stands for cost. This is the cost, and it has to do with the time it takes to mow a certain number of, of acres. So it's the cost of acres mowed. The domain is, well, we have to input how many acres are being mowed. And the range is the output, and that is the cost. And the cost will be how much money it's going to cost. How many dollars? Turn the page. All right, Jim wants to uh, write one function for mowing A acres of property. To write the cost C as a function of A acres of property, he substitutes T of A into the cost function and simplifies. So he plugs in T of A into the cost function. Okay, so T of A was 4A, so he plugs that in. So 30 plus 20 times 4A, he plugged it in. 20 times 4 is 80, so 30 plus 80A. So the cost to, of how many acres is 30 plus 80A. So it says write a sentence to explain what the expression C of T of 2 represents. Include appropriate units in your explanation. Well, remember, it's the cost to mow so many acres. Well, this time we know how many acres. Two acres. So we can say C of T of 2 represents the cost to mow two acres. Why might Jim want a single function to determine the cost of a job when he knows the total number of acres? So in real life, would we want to plug something into one function and then plug that answer into another function and then plug that answer into another function? Would we want to do that? No. If we have one function to deal with, isn't that way easier? So why would he want a single function? It's easier. That's kind of a no-brainer. Of course we want to do things that are efficient and quick. We don't want to do things that take forever. We want a shortcut. Number 13, explain what the expression C of T of 50 represents. Include appropriate units in your explanation. Well, this is just like the two that's there in number 11, but instead it's a 50. So this represents the cost to mow 50 acres. Explain what information the equation C of T of A equals 50 represents. Include appropriate units in your explanation. So this time, it's C of T of A equals 50, not C of T of 50. So these are not the same thing. So C stands for cost, and this equals 50, so that means that the cost is $50. So C of T of A equals 50 represents the cost to mow, we don't know how many acres, so we have to say A acres is 50 bucks. Turn the page. And then we are on to the 6.2 practice, which is where your homework is gonna be.